Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can integrate Wazoo with Abuse IPDB. And Abuse IPDB is essentially just a database that hosts a ton of no malicious IPs. And what's also nice is they provide us with an API that we can take advantage of to automate querying Abuse IPDB for malicious IPs. So going back to our intro here, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate Wazoo to take advantage of the Abuse IPDB API. And we're going to use this to check IP addresses that have attempted to SSH onto our boxes. So, so Wazoo is going to alert when a user has failed to log on to a box and then it's going to strip out the IP address and send it to Abuse IPDB to see if this is a no malicious IP or not. So the goals for this video, we are going to detect when a user has attempted to log in from a non-private IP address. So meaning that it is from the public internet. So we're going to exclude, you know, 192.168, our 172 dots and the 10 dots that have been reserved for private IP space. So we're going to create a Wazoo rule that will detect when a user has attempted to log in from a non-private IP address. We're then going to ask abuse IPDB if the IP is malicious, and then we are going to receive the response from abuse IPDB. The steps for this lab are going to go, we are going to deploy the integration script for abuse IPDB API that will be deployed on the Wazoo manager. We are then going to create a rule to exclude known private IPs. We're going to trigger the integration when a non-private IP has triggered our alert and our alert being a unsuccessful login attempt. And then we're going to create a rule to flag on a positive hit that was returned by abuse IPDB. So Wazoo asks abuse if this IP is malicious. Abuse says, yes, it is. We need a way for Wazoo to actually alert on that. And so we'll create a rule to do that as well. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And all right, so for this video, I'm actually going to be following this blog post uh, done by the guys over at Sock Fortress. I will link to this blog post as well. If you want to follow along, I will link to this in the description. First, our Wazoo rule, right? So we first want to create a rule that will create an alert when a non-private IP has attempted to log into our server. So if you look at the match type here, uh, we're using a very convoluted uh, regex expression to and the the job of this is to identify not private ip space ip so your 10 dots your 192.168 dot your 172 dots so those are uh those are those are reserved for private ips for use within internal networks so we're using this pcre2 which is a, a perl compatible regex library to match non-public IP addresses. So using this exclamation, or sorry, non-private IP addresses. So using this exclamation mark, we're saying not equal to something that would match this criteria here, which would be a private IP address. So we need a way to detect when authentication has failed from a, again, the keyword here being public, and we're using this match type to do so and have built this convoluted regex expression to uh, to do it. So regex is hella powerful, but it's not always easy on the eyes. So it can get kind of overwhelming, but let's go ahead and actually add this new rule. So I'll go into management, go into rules, go into custom rules, manage rule files, and I'll select my local rules and I'll just create a new group here and I will just copy and paste this guy over. Uh, I did notice that, so I'm running this on a CentOS 7 box, this slash B flag here, let me zoom in a bit. Uh, this slash B block was giving my CentOS 7 uh, which is what I use, which is the operating system my Wazoo manager is on. It was giving me issues. It wasn't matching. So, however, I have deployed this on an Ubuntu box that's running as a Wazoo manager, and it wasn't a problem. So, if this regex expression isn't matching for you, uh, maybe just try making a tweak. Try that initial tweak and see if that works. And if you're still having issues, just give me a shout in the comments, and I'll see if I can help you guys out. So, 
I'll go back there and I'll go ahead and save and then restart. And again, we want this rule to fire. So we have an if signature ID of 5716. So this rule, this so this rule here that we just added will only trigger when 5716 is triggered. And if we go back, we see 5716 is associated with our rule of SSH authentication failed. So when when the wazoo manager sees that this rule is triggered, it'll then say, okay. I will now, since rule 5716 has triggered, I'm going to now see if I can do a regex match on the IP address and see if it is a public or private IP. And if it's a public IP address, then it'll trigger this rule 100,001. So that should be restarted now. And let's see if we're now. So here is my agent here. And let's see if we're starting to get attacked. But looks like the hackers must be taking a break for now because I would expect the, this guy is open to the internet. So I would expect uh, this to get swarmed with alerts. But let's go ahead and generate. We can just go ahead and generate one ourselves. Um, so I'll do an IP address. I'll just say a dot 69, nice. And I'll use a pass, I'll, I'll say the user, I'm trying to log in as, as please subscribe. All right, so I echo that in. So now we see our entry. All right, so now, now let's go back into Wazoo and let's see if we got this to trigger. So if I refresh our alert, let me kind of bring this over and sure enough here we go authentication failed from a public ip address 104.181.152.69 nice and we see the username as please subscribe so good so it looks like our initial rule it uh it looks like our first rule is now triggering so that's good so now wazoo is able to detect when someone has attempted to log in granted this is only for uh, authentication successes and, or sorry authentication fails in the next video we'll cover authentication successes we'll take it a little further with some active response as well so okay but we got the first part of this squared away now let's actually deploy the python script that will make the call out to abuse ipdb and this needs to be put on our wazoo manager all right that looks good all right, so now let's go ahead and add our Python script that again, this will be on the Wazoo manager within the var OSEC integrations directory. So navigate to here and then we'll just use a text editor to create, I'll just call it custom dash abuse IPDB, IPDB dot pi, not oi, dot pi. <laughs> and I will go ahead and copy this whole block of code here and then we'll kind of just briefly walk through it here in a sec. And all right, so I got that pasted there and that all looks good. Um, I won't go too into detail of, of how this script uh, is actually working. Here you can see, here's our request out to abuse IPDB's API with our parameters that we've set. And looking at our parameters, you see we're grabbing our IP address that has the field of source IP. Our field that has, that contains our IP address is source IP. So the script is gathering that and sending that as part of the parameters. Uh, the script is also, is doing a lot more, but um, which I, that could be a whole video in itself. So uh, essentially though, how it's working is it's grabbing the source IP that it's getting from Wazoo from the wazoo manager assigning that to a parameter and we're searching for a max max age of 90 days so if you're familiar with abuse ibdb api you can set how far you want to go back so we're only looking for 90 day range of reported ip addresses so if this particular ip address was reported 91 days ago we wouldn't see that in our report because we're only looking at a max day of 90 so you can increase that here if you want i don't know the highest value that you can go up to um but yeah you can you know you're free to do your own customization to the script uh as well go ahead and save that off and now let's actually create our sin link 
So I'll go ahead and just create a nano custom abuse IPDB without the .py extension. And this will serve as our symlink. Oh geez, so I'll copy, paste that there and save that off. And now we need to change the permissions of these two files. So thankfully they already have that set out here. So I'll modify and then change the permissions to root in OSEC. And just for a sanity check, let's make sure that looks good. Okay, good. And now let's actually open our OSEC.conf and let's add our integration block. And all right, so again, you see our hook URL that we are uh, making our API request out to. You see we are referring, the name of this needs to be the name of the symlink file that you created. So ours was the abuse, the custom dash abuse IPDB without the .py extension. Uh, and then we need to input our API key and that you will actually get from abuse IPDB themselves. Uh, and that you can sign up for, uh, it is free. So as you can see here, you can sign up and you get a thousand IP checks a day. So a pretty high number, um, especially if you're uh, not in a huge company, uh, if you're not in a huge company, then a thousand should be fine. You can pay for more request hits if you want as well. So, and then we are looking at our rule ID. So when do we want this integration to run? Well, we want this to run every time we see a rule ID of 100,001, where if we go back into Wazoo here, we know the rule ID that we created to capture authentication fails from a public IP address is 100,001. So if your rule ID number is different, you would just need to make sure that you reflect that here as well. So I'll go ahead and input my abuse IPDB API key. And let's go ahead and restart our Wazoo manager to load in our new integration scripts and also our new osec.conf as well. So, okay, cool. So now that that's restarted, we now should all be set up to have these trigger. So let's first make sure that this is triggering as expected. So if I go ahead and tell my var law, uh, var osec log integrations.log, we can see our integrations running. Here you see some of my shuffle one's running but let's go ahead and actually trigger this alert again looks like our hackers are taking a break i guess it is a friday maybe they're out drinking already and at the bars <laughs> change my name to just open secure uh, i'll leave that as the same and triggered so now we should have seen our integration trigger and yeah sure enough we see our call out to abuse IPDB. Okay, good. So that flow is working. Now, the last piece of this, what we need to do is when abuse IPDB sends back to us, hey, we have a positive score, we need to now log that within our Wazoo manager. And to do so, we're just going to create another rule. So go ahead and copy this block here. All right, so paste that in here and so here we are getting, so abuse IPDB is gonna respond back to us in a JSON format of abuse IPDB dot abuse underscore uh, confidence underscore score. And what we want to do is look at that field is not equal to zero. And if it's not equal to zero, then we know that abuse IPDB has flagged it as a malicious IP address. So that looks good. So I'll go ahead and save and then restart our manager here. And now let's, since I've been doing this manually because it doesn't seem to be that our box is getting hit with, uh, with attempted logins. Let me see if I can, let me find a no malicious IP. Let's find a no malicious IP. Uh, let's try like 8.8.8. Does that flag anything? No, because the confidence of abuse is zero. So even though this has been reported seven, and it, uh, this is actually an interesting thing here. So 
uh, that I want you guys to understand as well. This IP has been reported 79 times, but the confidence of abuse is 0%. So if we look at the rule that we just added, you see we're grabbing the field of abuse confidence score. And so we're saying if that is equal to zero, then I don't want you to alert. So if I were to manually input 8.8.8.8 is my IP address, we wouldn't actually trigger this because the confidence of abuse is a zero. So let me actually just do a Google search for, I'll say malicious IPs, GitHub. Surely there's something here. Daily feed of bad IPs. <laughs> Apologies for the obscenery. <laughs> Try to keep it family friendly. Uh, let's look at the raw contents of this and hopefully it's not too bad, big and breaks my browser. Okay, let's, let me test with one of these. Run a check. And okay, this is a no malicious IP. So this should be a good one to test with. So, and all right, so if we grab this guy and I'll echo again here, let me, Go ahead and make tail my var osec logs integration logs file to make sure this triggers when i echo this into the var log secure file and i'll go ahead and paste that ip address there and i'll say failed password for please subscribe and if i input that uh okay good our integration script triggered so the api request was made out to abuse ipdb now abuse ipd should have responded and say whoa this ip has 100 percent uh, confidence of abuse and has sent that back to our manager now the rule that we just added should now have triggered to let us know that abuse ipdb has responded with 100 percent confidence so go ahead and refresh and expand that out and sure enough here we go so we see our authentication fail from public IP address with the IP that we just copy and pasted. And we see the with the user, uh, please subscribe. And then we made the request out to abuse IPDB. And look at that, IP with 100% confidence of abuse connected to your network. Um, connected to your network. And we get some details back from abuse IPDB, such as the ISP, uh, that this IP is associated with and some other kind of meta details and like last reported at uh, some source alert ID So pretty cool, right? We can now integrate wazoo with abuse IPDB and You know, so as of now, we're only doing it with authentication fails But what would be really interesting is if we could combine this with active response on authentication successes so we take the we take the same approach of determining public IPs, but instead for authentication fails, we actually change our if signature ID to authentication successes. So every time a user authenticates from a public IP address, we will trigger the abuse IPDB script. And if that responds back to us with let's say 100% confidence score, that this IP is malicious, we can be pretty sure that, hey, some unknown actor has compromised credentials and has actually been able to successfully log onto a box. And then in return, we could trigger an active response alert that immediately drops them from their SSH session. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, this is just one of the possibilities with integration. Uh, the beauty of Wazoo and really all open source tools is is the flexibility to make your homegrown uh, integrations with just about anything you want, um, which is really awesome and makes automation a hell of a lot easier. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you soon.